Hello. And we begin with a letter, a real one for once. Uh, it's from a Mr John Fox, and it goes like this. Dear Jeremy so-called Clarkson, for once, do you think it might be possible to test some cars in your programme that people can actually afford? Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Well, Mr Fox, this is the two-litre turbo diesel Volkswagen Jetta. But I'm afraid we have to get serious now, because we've had a letter. Oh, no. It's from... Well, it's from a mealy-mouthed, small-minded idiot. <laughs> and it says, Dear Jeremy Clarkson, because Britain is so crowded and there's so much traffic, there's no point owning a Ferrari and therefore no point road testing them on your programme. <laughs> well, now, I disagree, Mr Small-Minded Idiots, because there are plenty of places in Britain that aren't crowded at all. We've now had a letter from the people who make Top Gear in Australia. It's basically the same programme as ours, but with silly accents. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the letter here. It says, uh, Dear Top Gear UK, we're coming... Why am I doing this in a French accent? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Top Gear UK, uh, we're coming over to your stupid country soon, and we want to take you on in a sort of car-based ashes, you pommy boss. Yes, now, every week we receive thousands of letters from people that say, Dear Top Gear so-called gear. Why do you never test the sort of affordable cars that normal people are likely to buy and drive? Well, the truth is, we would love to, but the producers won't let us. No, absolutely. It's frustrating because, contrary to popular opinion, we really do like small, sensible little cars. I mean, he has a Fiat Panda. I have a Fiat 500. Yeah, and I have a very small AMG Mercedes. Yes. <laughs> Um, you see, every week we get a stack of letters and literally none of them ever asks what was the first car ever to be laid out in a way that we accept as being normal now? Good. So, moving on. No, 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 no. Actually, it's a very good question that's never been asked because, you know, we have the steering wheel in front of you, you have the clutch on the left, the brake in the middle, the throttle pedal on the right, you've got the gear stick there and the handbrake down there, but what was the first car to be like that? Oh. Yeah? No, no. Honestly, James and I decided, good idea, to go down to the Beely Motor Museum and see if we could find the answer to a question that no-one is asking. Because no-one cares. <laughs> <laughs> Every week on Top Gear, we get a stack of letters. But this week, one in particular caught our eye. It's from a Mr Needham, and it says, Why do you not test cars properly anymore? Have you forgotten how? Now, this really hurt us, so we decided to take the new Ford Fiesta and do a proper road test like they used to on Top Gear in the old days. Yeah, to be honest, we were quite looking forward to it, but then at the very last minute, Jeremy came in and said he wanted to do it. As you well know, Hammond, we receive thousands of letters every single week from viewers and they all say the same thing. Dear top so-called gear, the Alpha 4C, is it better than a quad bike? Well, I'll clear that one up straight away. Yes, it is, because quad bikes are slow, mm -hmm. ugly, noisy, stupid and incredibly dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean dangerous like you might fall off, I mean like they want to kill you. Mm -hmm. Everybody I know, pretty much, who's ever tried one, has been killed by it at some point. Yeah, that's as may be. But we need to settle this, so we're going to have a race. We start tonight with a letter. It's from a chap called Alan Massive Liar. And it says, <laughs> Dear Jez, Dick and Jim, uh, I want a convertible supercar, but I only have £113,500 to spend. Can you help? Well, this is very timely, actually, because, as it happens, no, we can't. <laughs> this is the new Audi R8 V10 Spyder, which, in this spec, costs £113,500. And this is the new Porsche 911 Turbo Convertible, which, to all intents and purposes, costs £113,500. But first, we start with this. This is the new Ford GT. And we have had thousands of letters from people all asking the same thing. We know it's fast, very fast. But is it faster than an airliner? Well, not thousands of letters. Uh, no, not thousands of letters. You mean none? Yes, we've had no <laughs> letters at all. But... I was interested in finding out anyway. But now, this. It's a letter from a young man called Jensen, who lives in Monte Carlo. <laughs> Dear Top Gear, 
my car is always breaking down. <laughs> please, 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 could you fix it for me to drive something more reliable around your track? <laughs> How could we possibly say no, ladies and gentlemen? Please welcome Jensen Button! Right home, tell him it's awful. Yes, Ask exactly. Us to send you just more send money. a letter. It, it right. Dear confused. Mrs. Hammond, it is with a heavy heart I write to say we have not seen Richard for three years. <laughs> He's in the vice like grip of what's her name? Fever. I'll put that <laughs> in fever. Yeah. Yeah, malaria. Call malaria. Call malaria. Okay, malaria. malaria yeah. <laughs> oh, so basically, girl. our conclusion is that Victorian explorers were just a bunch of hoorays on a very long gap year. Yes. yes. Is that about right? Yes. 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 Well-funded <laughs> gap year <laughs> here. Our colleague was in considerable pain. So we left him behind. Dear Mrs May, James has suffered a terrible back injury, wrestling a lion. He will be home in maybe five years. Please send money. And I have here a personal letter replying to us from David Cameron himself. Dear Top Gear, thank you for your letter. Uh, whilst it's true I'm keen for us to build on our ties out there, sending you three is not quite what I had in mind. The Foreign Secretary did wonder instead about a fence-mending trip to Mexico. Basically, my message is this. You do the cars, we'll do the diplomacy. Oh, here he comes now. Well, that was unequivocal. Well, we're going to ignore the Prime Minister. And if you're aiming to spend over £300,000, again, there's no shortage of choice. What with your Pagani Zondas, McLaren SLRs and Porsche Carrera GTs. But there's a problem. You see, our office is constantly flooded with letters from viewers saying they want to spend £235,000 on a car. This is this week's batch. Uh, dear Top Gear, £180,000 is too cheap. I'd like to buy a car that costs £235,000. Uh, here's another one. Dear Top Gear, £300,000 is too much. When will you experts realise I want to spend £235,000? Dear Top Gear, I want to spend £235,000 on a car, etc, etc. They all go on in the same vein. And that's a gap that's not been filled until now. Bad news! Bad news! We've had another letter from Mr Needham. I shall read it out. Dear so-called Top Gear, <laughs> last year I asked if you had forgotten how to do normal road tests on your so-called television show and you responded with an idiotic feature in which a Ford Fiesta was driven at high speed through a shopping centre and then off a Royal Marines landing craft into the sea. It was, actually. Well then, Jeremy. So I ask again, will you please do a normal test in which the concerns of the average viewer are addressed? Yours sincerely, Mr Needham, Belfast. We all thought, yeah, fair enough, we must respond. And then Jeremy stepped into the breach again. We start tonight with a letter. Dear Top Gear, why, oh why, don't you feature more cars aimed at ordinary people like me? Yours sincerely, Mr R. Abramovich of Chelsea. <laughs> well, Mr Abramovich... Our man of the people, James May, was only too happy to oblige. Perhaps this is what he's on about. No, not the gym palace. This. The new Rolls-Royce Phantom Drophead. So let's get on with this letter, which we have received. It says, Dear Top Gear, what would your programme have been like if you were making it 60 years ago? <laughs> Simple. Exactly the same. Yes. Anyway, we've had a letter. It's literally from some bankers, and it says, Dear Top Gear, this time last year we didn't have any money, but the government has given us some now. However, we don't want the public to know that we're loaded again, so we need really fast, expensive cars that are quite discreet. Can you help, yours sincerely, some bankers? Well, <laughs> as it happens, yes, we can help. And we begin with something from BMW. We start once again with a letter. Uh, it's from some Swedish youths and it says, Dear Top Gear, we are some Swedish youths and we've been given the run of a whole ski resort for a weekend. Do you a race fancy having? <laughs> 
plainly, this was a job for Richard Herring. That is a Vauxhall Corsa. Ah, there's a note. It's from Pinky and Perky. Dear James, hope you enjoy taking this to the max. P.S. It was developed at your most favourite place in the whole wide world. Oh, God. This wasn't what I had in mind. But since I was here and the camera crew were paid for, I had no choice but to get on with it. What's that? I have a letter. The nearest civilization is a town called Moron. Is it? That's a surprise. Yeah. It's hundreds of miles away. In order to reach it, you must build the contents of these boxes. You have enough food and water for seven days. Um, after every single film we ever show on the Grand Tour, we always get a load of messages from people on social media, I say people, I mean teenagers, <laughs> saying that they didn't like the film because it was too scripted, too faked and too set up. Yeah, we do. I've got one of them here. It's uh, from Monaro Boy 4541 <laughs> who says, I hated that thing you did in Morocco because it was too scripted. Why can't you do stuff like you did in Portugal? Which I also hated because it was too set up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we decided to make a completely unplanned film. No scouts going ahead to find locations, no pre-scripted exchanges between us, no set-up explosions. No, all we agreed on was that we should do whatever it was we were going to do in Croatia. And, annoyingly, broken. Which means we can't put it round our test track. So instead, I'm going to answer a question that literally a viewer has asked. I have their letter here. It says, Dear so-called Top Gear, I'm aware that there are many elegant and dramatic supercars that I could buy. Well, yeah, things like these. But as I am the victim of a botched eye operation, what I want is a supercar that is catastrophically ugly. Can you help? Yes, I think I can. This could be the answer to your problems. It's a new supercar from Germany. And, well, it's not exactly a looker. We begin with a letter. It says, Dear Top Gear, I am a leading light in the Albanian Mafia, and I'm thinking of buying the new baby Rolls Royce, the Ghost. But how does it compare to, say, a Bentley or a Mercedes? Yours sincerely, Normanski Ertesi. Now, this cause one hell of a row in the office because the producer said we well, should go out to Albania and do the test and we said no we can't be seen to be helping the Mafia we were adamant we said this is our line in the sand we will not go You join me on the ferry from Corfu to Albania. Now, anyone who's seen a, an aerial photograph of London can't help but have noticed that there's an enormous blue bus lane running right through the middle of it, which is called the Thames. <laughs> it's a perfectly good idea to get buses off the road and make them go down the river. And we've had a letter from a company this week saying they've built just such a thing. Look at that. It's a bus boat. <laughs> There's a bus, goes down a river, and then it just pulls out at the far end. That's fantastic. It is. The bloke says he spent all his money on it and he wants backing. Well, you're not getting any from us, sunshine. We spend all our money on petrol and crisps. <laughs> so we're not going to give you any money, but we do give you our backing. Anything that gets buses off the road is a good idea. <laughs> oh, just before we do the news, we've had a letter. Got to share it with you. Um, here, pink note paper. All the eyes have got little circles on them. <laughs> Ready? Dear Richard. Oh, right. Yeah, I watch Top Gear. I think you're the best-looking guy on the programme. That's hardly an achievement, is it? You're cool. <laughs> Fair point. You're cool, good-looking, ace hairstyle, she wicked sounds... clothes. She best sounds wishes. Great. That's, uh, that's Stuart. <laughs> it's a modern world, that's it all right, It gets Stuart. better, because would you like to know Stuart's address? Not really, no. The Folkestone Wing? Her Majesty's Prison, Broadmoor. <laughs> Broadmoor? He's getting out soon and he wants to know... But he could can, be watching no, now, listen. shut up! What did you do with all the shirts from the last series? Can I have them? <laughs> no! no you, oh, oh, yes! How long is he going to be at that address, no. do we know? It's better than that. 
Stuart, come on <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <clears throat> I don't like that. We get literally no letters a week, uh, every week, from people saying, look, I want to go to work, but I want to leave a trail of blue and red smoke in my wake while I'm going along. Yes, it's not easy if you can't afford a red Arab or if you have no ability to fly one. However, help is now at hand from Japan, where they've come out with these. These tyres, they say, if you spin them, will emit coloured smoke. <laughs> yeah, now the thing was, is that this morning, to test this out, we bolted some of those tyres to the back of a TBR, put the stick in it, and this is what happened. There he is, look, and away he goes. Oh, look! <laughs> Now, we are told... That's like a red arrow. It is. We are told that these tyres do affect handling and performance somewhat, and braking. <laughs> oh, yeah, but what a way to arrive at work. Yeah, look, at, look at the stick. He's, he's sort of enjoying himself in there, is he? Look at him. <laughs> That's a happy stick. I'm a red arrow, I'm not a stick. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> About, uh, what, 200 quid a pop, aren't yeah, they? they? 200 are. quid. So if you want to do that, there you go. They could use those when they need a new Pope. What, and they have the coloured smoke? <laughs> yeah, up the chimney. What, so you get some little Italian pikey in his Fiat Uno in a fireplace somewhere in the Vatican? Is he ready? Yeah, right, now! <laughs> <laughs> now put Angelina back. Mm. <laughs> oh, now, how many people here enjoyed the ambulance film we did last week? Yeah. 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 OK, you see, the problem we have is that um, we've had an electronic communication from a man called Mr... E36 man 4000, who says, Dear so-called Top Gear, I hated your thing on ambulances. Why don't you stick to cars? <laughs> Shall we show Mr... What's he called? Mr Hashtag. Shall we show him what this show would be like if we just talked about cars? Yeah, yeah all right. OK, we'll do a shot. I'll tell you what I drove this week. Volkswagen Passat diesel. Did you? Mmm. <laughs> Surprisingly comfortable. <laughs> I also drove an Audi TT, which is much nicer than you'd think. <laughs> Actually, I've been driving the new Porsche 911 Turbo, mm -hmm. which is very fast, but surprisingly quiet. Is Ooh. it? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Aston Martin have built a new one-off for a Bond film. It's called the DB10. Yep. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think much of that, actually. I don't, I don't like the way it looks. No, I don't. No, I do. Okay. Um, Vauxhall <laughs> has a new kind of Corsa. <laughs> i got nothing on that. <laughs> Shall we give up on car news? I'm going to take charge again, because I want to talk about something else, right? Now, I've received a letter. <clears throat> May I just read it to you, dear Mr. Clarkson? You're going to love this. I'm writing to you on behalf of the world famous Madame to Swords. Oh, oh they're God. not going to. Yes, they are. Are you joking? Yes, oh, they are. Oh, no. Wait. They say they, I have been highly requested, highly requested to be immortalised in wax. Are you sure that doesn't say immersed in wax? <laughs> No, immortalised in wax. How are they going to immortalise you in wax? Where are they going to get all the wax? <laughs> Presumably they'll have to melt down everything else in Madame Tussauds to make one massive hideous wax dummy <laughs> of a hideous dummy. Then it's easy. They just get a very big candle, they light it, let it drip down the edges for a couple of hours and then just draw a face on it with a felt tip. <laughs> would look a bit like it. And what are they going to do with it when they've got it? Imagine children, we go to Madame Tussauds, we go to... What is it? Ah! It's going to be the, the first waxworks in history to be sculpted with a pickaxe. Yes, and a hammer. Yeah. I want to see them sculpting it, because imagine once they've melted down enough wax, which is a lot, the size of the urn, it'll look like a scene from Lord of the Rings, with all these little orcs walking around the bottom, they're getting ready for that big paw to create this hideous, hideous, grotesque, enormous Thing. How are they going to fit it in? No, don't put it there. Put it in the Natural History Museum. <laughs> <laughs> Better still, yeah, <laughs> next to the big brontosaur. <laughs> just a big skeleton. Just a big skeleton next to the brontosaur. Big Tyrannosaurus. What the hell is that? <laughs> and then people can go and watch. Ladies and gentlemen, the sound of bitterness and jealousy. <laughs> 
colleagues, though. I wish I hadn't brought that up. Um, now, uh, I don't know if any of you were watching last week, but uh, I had several accidents in a Reliant Robin, <laughs> which has generated a sizable post bag. Um, I've got some of the letters here, lots of them. Let me just read you this one, OK? It says, Dear Top Gear, the only reason why Mr so-called Clarkson was killed is because he wasn't driving it properly. I bet if the Stig drove it, he'd be fine. <laughs> Tell you what, let's find out. <laughs> now, I bet you he rolls that over. No, this is a Stig. The only thing that's ever defeated him was that Koenigsegg. Yeah, just, he so will not be able to do a lap in no. that car without rolling over. You I sure? guarantee it. He'll use his special Here he is, powers. coming up to the first corner now. There you go. Absolutely, Absolutely fine. fine. And so well, he's amazing. Oh, no, he hasn't. <laughs> there you go. Told you. I uh, told you. I well, there are more letters, though. This is one that caught my eye. Dear top so-called gear, why didn't you use an Isetta bubble car instead? And do you know what? It's a good point. Why didn't you? Because if you think about it, I've got one here. One wheel at the back, two at the front. It's a more stable three-wheeler configuration. Yeah, but this has another problem. What problem? Well, <laughs> why don't you fire it up, mate? The 300cc engine bursting into life. Now, if you could drive into our imaginary garage over here, that would be lovely. Oh, look, he hasn't fallen over. Still hasn't fallen over. Yeah. It's much better already. Just Still wait a minute. Right. Hammered. Here we go. OK, all the way into the garage, please, mate. All the way in. You've got a foot to go. Six inches. Well, and there, you there you go. Marvellous. What's wrong with that? It hasn't fallen over. It's much better. OK, <laughs> now, if you'd like to get out. <laughs> I, I see that, your point. The door's at the front. You'll have what, to back what? it up, mate. Yeah, go on, reverse. OK, where is reverse? Hasn't got one. <laughs> really? Well, well, so, how does he get out? Well, this is the thing. Honestly, <laughs> if you think about it... No, if you, no, listen, James, stop fingering the studio. What? The thing is... <laughs> the thing is, OK, that if you had one of these cars, you got home like this, you got stuck in your garage, there were two problems. You couldn't call inside your house for your wife and girlfriend to come and rescue you because it was the 1950s and the mobile telephone hadn't been invented. And, of course, if you had a car like this, you wouldn't have a wife or a girlfriend. <laughs> it's very funny. Can you push me out now, please? What? Could, we, we, what? could you give me a push? Back. we push you out? Push you out. Uh, can we... Uh, so, what's the question? We could only either push him out or... Not, not do that. Not do can that. Can we push him out? Ah, uh, whew. I think no. I'm coming down in favour of no. Right? No, it's sorry, James. It's, <laughs> it's a no. Sorry. It's a unanimous sorry, it's no. A no. See you, mate. Yeah. Sorry. Now, we get thousands of letters every week sent here to our top gear office. And to be honest, most of them we ignore. Until recently, we suddenly decided, well, this is an untapped resource. And we've spotted a bit of a theme developing. Absolutely. We get 100 million letters every week from women complaining about their men's love of cars. This is true. We do. We don't write to Trini and Susanna on what not to wear and complain about women coming out of changing rooms going, this dress is perfect and I love the colour, I'll try something else on. No, we don't. <laughs> and yet, let me just share this one. This is from Corinna Behrman of uh, Swindon, and she says, in December last year, I was expecting our baby, I went into labour, we went to hospital, my labour turned out to be slow, and we sat watching television in the communal lounge area. Top Gear came on as I started to get painful contractions. My fiancé, Darren, as always, was glued to your programme, was oblivious to the pain I was in. Occasionally, he turned to me and asked, all right? <laughs> and then turned back to your programme before I'd even responded. Only after Top Gear had finished did he pay any attention we were able to go back to my hospital room. Yes, if you're going to write a letter in, try and have a point or maybe something contentious in there. I don't know, what's that about? I have um, no idea. This theme continues. I've got one here. Now, along the same sort of line. Hi, Jeremy! With an exclamation mark. It's very irritating. Um, my but This is from Claire, when she signed it with a little X, which is like a little kiss. <laughs> my boyfriend has just bought a new Audi A3. Fair enough. Now he's driving me mad with this new game he has where he tries to flip the remote locking from as far away as possible. Is he normal? Yes, clearly. In fact, I'd say, if anything, he sounds like a bit of an amateur. Yeah, because it's how you do the flip In that fact, matters. Claire, I'm, go Claire, I'm going to... This is for your fella. I'm going to show some moves here. Yeah. I've, got, I've got some special yeah. ones. This, um, this first one is called the Bond, and it's perhaps more of a closing manoeuvre. So the car's there, and you, you walk away from your car thus, and then at the last minute, you turn and fire. <laughs> That's the, it's a simple, good one to start with, I reckon. Keeping the range good. Yeah. I quite like the high shot. 
if you could demonstrate it's, that. Uh, well, the, the true high shot is that. Uh, the, the slight That's the high the shot, which we like very much. Then there's a really good one, which is the I've lost my car in the multi-storey. Uh, that's, that's also known as the lawn sprinkler. Waiting for the things <laughs> to cover. All this stuff is being spoiled by these things. This is keyless entry, OK? Now, they tell us that when you walk up to the car, if you've got one of these in your pocket, the door is open, OK? So I was walking up to the car, opening the door, thinking, that's fine, you get out, lock it, and you assume, if you walk away, it'll lock itself. It does, doesn't it? Well, this is it. You've got a 100 gram Merc, and you think, is that locked? So you go back, and it's open, and you think, well, it would be. <laughs> Bound to be, So yeah. you have to say to passers-by, so could you just hold that? <laughs> then you go back, and then you find out it doesn't lock itself. Yeah. You have to push a button. How uncool is that? That's very cool. <laughs> I must say that I think they are going the wrong way with these sort of pairing... Them the, back, actually. ...with these key cards, yeah. pairing them down to nothing. I think if they really want to know their market and appeal to, let's be honest, us chaps, they should go the other way mm. and make them more elaborate. Getting back to the original question about range, I was told something, and you don't know this, I was told something this morning which sounded astonishing. So I had to try it out. I am now about 40 yards from the back of my car and the central locking is still working fine. But if I go back another 10 or 15 yards to say here, we're out of range. However, if I put the key against my head, like so, and try again. <laughs> it's working! Doesn't work like that. Does work. What have I done to my head? <laughs> it does work. It, it doubles the range, pretty much. It doubles the range that it works using your head. Do you have to have your mouth open? No, no, it's just like a big amplifier. I, I just don't get that. If you've got the faintest idea how that works, please write to us at uh, www.bbc.co.uk forward slash Top Gear or about anything else. Yeah, no, if you've got letter. any letters, we're not going to be doing this every week. Read them out if they're interesting. Yes, that'll um, But anyway, let's get on to some of our viewers' letters. Now, you may remember last week we discovered that if you hold your car's remote control central locking device against your head, it doubles its range. OK? Mm. Now, we didn't understand that. No. There was a girl in the audience last week who was a scientist, and she said it had to do with the fillings in your teeth. Yeah, but we tested that. We, we did. The, our producer um, deigned to come into work one day, Which and nice. he has no fillings in his teeth, and it worked for him, so it isn't that. Mm. Um, loads of people have written to us, and all we've been able to discover is that uh, no scientists watch Top Gear. No, that much is clear. Not one. Uh, there's a chap here who says the reason is it's because your body acts like a grounding plane, which sounds good, it sounds a, a sort of plausible explanation, but then you read on and he's got a, uh, a, a GSXR 1000, which oh, I God, believe... That was brilliant! Yeah. He's a biker, sound fellow, I believe. And lots of people think it is your body that does it. A uh, guy here, Craig from Bromley, reckons it's because your body has iron in it. Well... well I mean, it does, but a tiny bit. I have no iron in my body. I am pure fat. All the way through. Yeah, I am just fat from here down... Well, fat and hair. What I say is it's nice to be consistent. I am, yeah. yeah. There's a chap here called Zunkan at America Online, and he says it's human bones, a great amplifier of radio waves, and it's something to do with your elbows. <laughs> no, we had, we had loads that were to do with bits of your body doing this. So we had one guy who reckons it's your ears working his radar, which I quite like. Another one, I'm not sure about this, saying it's your nasal cavities. Apparently they're as big as an acoustic guitar or something, which... They're not, are they? <laughs> Close, but well, it's I'm not. looking at you and I'm thinking it's quite a big schnozzer, but it's nowhere near an acoustic guitar. It, that ain't no guitar. No. You know, I'm not going to see you come up. That bloke's got a guitar on his face. For a nose. It's rubbish. No, you're not. I know, there's some I mean, what they're stuff. basically saying, I think what the audience is saying here is that if you were to build a creature that had my bone structure with sort of enormous elbows and Martin Clunes's ears. It's looking good. And Daniela Westbrook's nose. Nice touch. <laughs> You could set off some nuclear missiles in North Korea from your house in Birmingham. Yeah, perfect. Another sequence of letters that we've had this week is from children who are ashamed, frankly, of the cars that they're being taken to school in. Mm. There's a chap here, George Howard, he's 14 years old. He says his father takes him to school in a 1992 
white Fiat Panda. Oh, no, that's cruel. <laughs> that's not right. He actually says, God has not answered my request for help, no matter how much I ask him. He says, I am so desperate, I even tried sacrificing a small goat. <laughs> See, it's having an effect or no, This is serious. This has a, a deep sociological effect. It's a short trip from being dropped off in a rubbish car at school to, well, they'll be kicking down the door of your bed, sitting, finding the head in your fridge next. There will it's, be. You know, it's, it's... So listen, kids, you know, I know there's a lot of discussion in the newspapers and on TV about the school run, what it should be done in. It's what type of car. That's what matters. If you're ashamed by your parents' car, then write to us and we'll shame them. So George Howard of, um, where's he from? The internet. <laughs> George Howard from the internet, Mr enough. and Mrs Howard, sell the panda. It doesn't have to be expensive or a Ferrari, just not rubbish and embarrassing. Exactly. We'll have a nice exactly. little moon as well. Can I just say, we, obviously we had a lot of mail about the stick. Odd one here from Steve Rowland. We have a cat called Stig. So can you please change the name of your racing driver to something other than Stig? Because every time your program on his sleep is disturbed when you mention the Stig's name. <laughs> Actually, come to think of it, Stig. <laughs> See those slippers? Pee in them. <laughs>